professor and director of the Institute for Theory and Computation at Harvard University, Dr. Avi Loeb, and he's going to explain it to us. So, Doc, let me ask you this. First of all, we got images of the comet were released by the European Space Agency weeks ago and had people talking about this unusual comet. During our government shutdown, the, uh, the, you know, the tinfoil hats came out because NASA stayed silent. And then NASA's associate administrator, Nikki Fox, said this about 31 Atlas. It definitely behaves like a comet. We certainly haven't seen any, any techno signatures or anything from it that would lead us to believe it was anything other than a comet. But the super cool thing is not that it's exactly like all the comets that we see in our solar system, it's the differences that are so tantalizing for us as we, we and I, you know, it gives me goosebumps too. It's, it could be from something that existed before our own solar system. I renamed it 31, it's three eyes. So professor, why did this particular comet get all the attention and do you agree with NASA's assessment that it's just a comet? Well, thanks for having me. Uh, the verdict should not be uh, decided by an administrator. It should be decided by scientists working on the data from 3i Atlas. And uh, one of the shortfalls of this uh, particular press uh, conference was that no scientists that analyzed the NASA data were included. It was officials from NASA. And moreover, what the, the message the officials conveyed was that it's a boring object. It's an object uh, similar to the comets we're familiar with, except it came from a different environment. Uh, that is not the case with 3i Atlas. In fact, it has 12 anomalies that were not even discussed during the press conference. For example, its size, it's a million times more massive than the first interstellar object. This is the third one, and it's a million times more massive than the first one. Um, there is not enough rocky material in interstellar space to accommodate the delivery of such a big package over the past decade that we monitored the sky. And it lies in the plane of the planets around the sun. That's amazing that, you know, the chance of that is one in 500. That's only the second anomaly. If you combine these two anomalies, the big mass of the object and the uh, trajectory that it has, it's already a chance of one in 100,000. And it raises the question of whether this trajectory was designed by some intelligence. And I just did a calculation this morning, you are the first one to hear that, that the object will come closest to Jupiter on March 16th, uh, 2026, and it will arrive exactly at the right distance to Jupiter you know, to within a small fraction of a percent, exactly the right distance, where the gravity of the sun will not be able to tear apart any probe that it releases uh, near Jupiter. So it arrives just at the right distance so that Jupiter's gravity will overcome the sun's tidal gravity and the, anything it releases there will stay there, which suggests why did it arrive exactly at the distance in order perhaps to release some probes near that, near that planet. So there are lots of questions. Uh, it also shed the nickel with very little iron, lots of anomalies, and NASA did not discuss them. Uh, instead of what they did, which is to say, you know, we pretty much uh, know that it's an object of the type that we have seen before. They should have emphasize the mysteries, or they should not have held the press conference because they didn't have much new information there. You know, the officials showed us a, a fuzzy image taken by the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter 45 days uh, prior to that, and uh, that image did not convey any new information. The only thing we could see is that there is some light preceding the object that's completely different from what we expect from a cometary tail, uh, which should be aligned with the direction to the sun. Uh, instead, what we saw is an extension of the image, the fuzzy image, in the direction of motion ahead of the object, as if there is a beam of light or a beam of particles that are illuminating the path of the object ahead of it, perhaps in order to avoid obstacles, you know, that's very intriguing. Nothing of that nature was discussed. So, you know, you, this begs the question of why would NASA officials try to produce a press conference in which they convey very little information, nothing much new, uh, and they are not attending to the most exciting anomalies of this object? Real quickly, there was another story about the red planet 
that um, NASA's Mars uh, Perseverance rover found a rock that doesn't belong there. How does a rock get on Mars that doesn't belong there, and who put it there? Right, so Mars is, like any other planet, is getting bombarded with uh, objects that uh, come from somewhere else. The difference between Mars and the Earth is that the Earth has an atmosphere. So when an object enters the atmosphere, it burns up as a result of the friction with <coughs> air. And you end up with a fireball that basically consumes objects smaller than the size of a person. So you don't have anything left from them as they burn up in the atmosphere of Earth. However, Mars doesn't have over the past two billion years. It lost its atmosphere, so anything colliding with it will end up on its surface. It's a perfect museum. So you can find objects that do not belong to Mars. The, you know, the most interesting objects might be of technological origin, you know, something that was uh, floating through space, happened to collide with Mars, and carries information about some gadgets that were sent by other civilizations. That would be interesting to, to look for. This particular one looks like a rock that came from somewhere else. You know, there are lots of rocks in the solar system. These are the Lego pieces that were left over from the construction project of the planet. So I wouldn't be surprised if there are some uh, uh, rocks like that that didn't burn up in the atmosphere and ended up on the surface of Mars. We will find more. Mm. Dr. Avi Loeb, always good to have you. Thanks for having me. Information. Truth. Is freedom. Is Newsmax. It's real news for real people.